Looking at a couple ways of painting horns today on Quick Tips. Hi there, Chris here with another quick tip for you all. In this video, we are going to take a look at painting horns. So a couple ways of painting horns. To get us started, we're going to use Skaven Blight Dinge. We're going to slap a little bit onto our palette. We're going to have just the dampness of the brush to thin the color out ever so slightly as we apply our base coat. Now, I am applying this base coat uh, to a demon of corn, as it were, and these horns could be just be any model in Fantasy, Age of Sigmar, whatever it might be, Dungeons and Dragons, you name it, whoever's got horns, this is one way of going about painting those horns. Kind of specific to a blood letter, but you know, whatever. Storm Vermin Fur is next, and we're gonna take a little bit of the uh, previous color and put that into a uh, mixture of the Storm Vermin. We're gonna use Dampness of the Brush. Uh, the mixture is roughly a one-to-one. -one. It's roughly one-to-one, -one, just kind of an in-between. And it's kind of mixed just to the eye, but otherwise um, don't fret too much about the mixture other than just grabbing a dollop of the paint and then just mixing it to eye and it looks like the in-between value of the colors, of the two previous colors. Once we've applied that onto the uh, highlights of the horn, again, we're leaving the darker color underneath. We'll come back into the uh, Storm Vermin. Is it Storm Vermin? Yeah. And we're just gonna begin applying more highlights. And in this fashion, this is a fairly typical way of applying highlights on a model and horns for that matter. And uh, building the color to brightness uh, out towards the tips of the horn. So it's gonna be a slightly deeper color towards where it uh, gets close to the head as it were. And when we are applying the highlights, I'm just simply going building color towards the ends and the tips of the areas. Not pushing the color too far down. Now, again, this is a simple layering process that I'm employing, employing here, but we could also mix it up and do some finer uh, tuning. More gas bone is next, and we're gonna take a little bit of the uh, storm vermin, uh, just a dollop of it, and we're gonna mix it into the Morgast and give us kind of the in-between color, just to you know help with uh, transitions and everything like that. Now, again, when you are mixing colors and to create your color transitions, typically you're doing this in a fashion in which you're simply gonna layer or begin glazing. And when you're glazing with these in-between colors, it makes your transitions of color all the more seamless. And I think that is really what a lot of people are striving for when they are going about this. So here I can see I grabbed a very heavy amount of water, grab a little bit of that mixture color and mix it into the water because I'm gonna glaze with this. And when I'm glazing, typically wherever I start the color, I push the color towards where I want the color to build up higher, to get brighter, to lay more of the color down. So whenever you are glazing with a very thinned out color, you will notice that the color builds wherever you finish your brush stroke. So you can always employ that to help you create your transitions and such on a model. Now, one thing I don't show here is that I do apply uh, about two or three different layers onto the surface each time that I go about creating more. And again, when you get into glazing and creating your highlights in such a fashion, you can end up just glazing all the live long day. And uh, that's fine. I mean, you know, whatever helps you create those transitions that you want. With the final color, the more gas bone, I use that and just create a slight little texture on the surface. Then I jump into some gore grunt of fur with some contrast medium. I'm gonna slap two drops onto the palette, grab a fairly generous amount in my brush and mix that in just knocking the color way down and uh, with this I'm going to create a little glazing from the flesh of the demon to the horns of the head just to help create uh, a bit of a blend there so that it doesn't feel so abrupt that we have these gray horns popping out of this red flesh and uh, again when you're doing this for something else it could be you know some sort of monster or anything like that and if the horns in the head uh, don't have that sudden uh, kind of like you know like the horns are protruding out like there's uh, you know some sort of a ring around it and you have that obvious break in it uh, this kind of technique helps uh, just to have create some transitions in between these areas between colors it doesn't have to be an abrupt stop for anybody who's kind of you know jarred by such a thing we're coming in with pure gore grunta at that point just to give us some nice deep color shadows and create some separation but not so much separate that it feels like you know these things are just bolted onto the side of the head now speaking of bolted onto the sides of the head we're going to use wraith bone here and paint the horns of a chaos marine just the dampness of the brush to thin the color out ever so slightly and begin applying a base coat 
onto these horns. And I do apply two thin coats onto the surface here, which is not shown, but uh, I think you kind of all know what I'm talking about here. Snake bite leather citadel contrast with some contrast medium. We're gonna slap two drops onto the palette, grab a fairly generous amount into our brush and mix this into the uh, mixture and give it a nice thorough mix. We're gonna grab one brush and another brush. We're gonna use two brushes for this. I'm gonna use a larger shade brush for my blending. So the application is just gonna be my small base coating brush. And you can see here with that thinned out mixture, I apply it to the entirety of the horn with like really no thought as to where it's being uh, built up. And then with the dryer brush, uh, the shade wash brush, I begin feathering out the color. And you can see as we feather out the color, we're not pulling all the snake bite leather off the surface. And in fact, you can see how it's even at the base, it is slightly different than the horn that was untouched. So again, we are gonna come in and hit these horns uh, again with this color and draw most of it out. If you end up with any areas where there is uh, just too much color where you don't want it, it's just a little too dark, it's a little too punchy, what have you, you can always draw the excess out. And here I think we'll demonstrate that in just a moment. Um, Again, this is just a feathering technique and you see here on that one horn, it's a little too heavy on, on the upper portion there where I left it. And so very quickly, I'll just use just the very ends of the bristles to draw that excess out and kind of balance out how much color is there. You can see right there how you know, we've kind of stopped, you know, saturating too heavily. The next layer after that's dry is about a uh, little over three quarters of the way down the horn. And then in the same procedure, I feather the excess off, allowing more color to build towards the ends of the horn. So this is the opposite of what we did with the previous example of building brightness to the ends of the horns. Now we're building up to a darker color towards the ends of the horn. We do this about two or three times of this uh, thinned out snake bite leather and then feathering it off. Again, you can do it as many times as you feel are necessary, but uh, the process of this two brush feathering method is really, really straightforward. It only requires you to be uh, thin out your colors and also the dampness of the brush is important as well. And every time I uh, feather off the color, I do rinse the brush and dry it off thoroughly before applying more color again. Here, I'm just coming in with some straight up snake bite leather. Gonna apply it to the model surface. You have to be very fast when you're using the pure color out of the bottle as uh, when you're feathering, if you're not fast enough, you can leave little tide marks behind and that can be kind of annoying as you try and correct and you know fix these little boo-boos as you work your way around the surface. So bear that in mind. You have to have that other brush in hand. Be ready to move fairly quickly as you're building the colors up. And again, this is probably all the work of about, I don't know, six layers. Now that sounds like a lot, and it is a lot, but it's not that bad when you are working fairly quickly. The total time that it took me to build up this transition on these horns was probably only about five to 10 minutes, which is, you know, fairly fast. Again, if you're working fairly quickly, this is a fast and effective way of creating this transition on horns. Saigor Brown is next. We're gonna take a very generous amount into our brush, apply it to our palette, and then we're gonna grab uh, a very he healthy amount of water, mix that into the entire dollop of paint so it's thinned out, but not with medium. And very quickly here, we're just gonna build this onto probably less than a third, maybe less than a quarter of that end of that horn. It only goes down a few segments. And then really quickly, we're gonna feather it. And then once you have the color in the brush as well, you can move it around and, you know, help create more blends, push in more, uh, you know, areas where there might be more shadow or anything of that matter. Once that is dry, we're going to just quickly cap off the ends of those horns, which is pure Saigor Brown right out of the pot. Here you can see we're just simply hitting those, the very tips of these uh, horns. And that'll pretty much be it. And you can pretty much leave it as is. Here you can see I'm just simply farting around with more of the color, just kind of ma making those ends uh, of the caps very, very dark, very, very saturated uh, with the Saigor Brown. And you can leave it as such. If you're happy with that transition and how that overall looks, you can leave it. Of course, we're gonna go just a little bit further. We're gonna take some uh, Citadel Dry Tyrant Skull. We're gonna use a small dry brush very, very quickly, grab a little bit of the paint into the bristles. I wipe the excess paint off so that there's very, very little bit of uh, paint left in the bristles. Of course, you can always go back and watch my video explaining on how I go about my dry brushing process. And very, very lightly, we are gonna catch just the high points 
of each of those little segments on the horn, even up to the black of the, uh, or the dark brown of the tips. We're gonna get that with just a little bit of the color. We don't want a whole lot of uh, color deposited on each of those high points. We're looking just to catch just those edges. So that's why it's very, very important to have very, very little paint on your brush and also to keep a very, very light hand as you work your way around building up the color and creating those segments. And here you are, that's it. That is uh, painting horns using two different methods. You, one using contrast and feathering, the other one using layering and glazing. Uh, I think there's fairly uh, simple, straightforward ways of painting. Feel free to leave a comment down below if you found this helpful. Feel free to leave a comment down below as to what you would like to see covered in this series of quick tips. And a huge thank you to my patrons for their continued support. Huge thank you to all of you on YouTube, uh, clicking that membership buttons. Just big, big thank yous to you all and your support and continuing of this series. A huge thank you. Take care of your brushes. They will take care of you. And I will see you in the next tutorial.